Obsidian on your computer is a note-taking masterpiece. Obsidian on your phone is a completely different beast. The interface shrinks, the layout shifts, and suddenly, finding your notes isn't as intuitive as it was on the desktop. But that doesn't mean it's unusable. It just means you might need a little help navigating the differences. I'm going to show you everything you need to know to take your knowledge base on the go, along with some issues you'll likely run into, and share my recommendations for getting the most out of the Obsidian mobile app. The first thing you'll need is to get your notes syncing between your computer and your phone. For Apple users, the easiest native method is to create a vault directly in iCloud Drive. When you first open the app, make sure you choose the Create a Vault in iCloud option. If you have an existing vault, you'll need to manually locate your Obsidian folder in your iCloud Drive, and then simply drag your existing vault folder right into it. For Android users, my top recommendation is using Obsidian Sync. While I haven't used it personally, it is widely considered the most seamless and headache-free solution. It's built by the developers, fully encrypted, and for a small monthly fee, it takes the pain out of multi-platform syncing. It's also available for Apple users, offering an encrypted cross-platform alternative to iCloud. All the desktop tools are here in the mobile app's slimmed down interface, but they're a bit hidden. Tap the icon in the top left to open up the standard side pane with all the various views for accessing your files, search, tags, properties, and bookmarks. This is also where you jump into settings with the little gear icon in the top right and switch between vaults via this drop down menu. The files, search, tags, properties, and bookmarks views all pretty much function the same way as they do on the desktop. Taking a look at the top toolbar, you've got your opened notes title in the center. To the right of that, you might see a bookmark icon if the note is already bookmarked. Tap it to edit or remove the bookmark. Next, the little pair of glasses you see here toggles reading mode. Tapping it turns it into a pen icon. When you tap the pen icon, you get toggled back to edit mode. Finally, the three dots in the corner open the notes options menu. This is the equivalent of right-clicking a notes tab on desktop. The bottom toolbar houses several options for navigation. Starting from the right, the hamburger menu icon opens the ribbon menu normally found on the left of Obsidian on your computer. This is where you find icons for Graph View, Quick Switcher, and any other third-party plugins you have installed. To the left of the ribbon menu is your tabs menu, marked by a square showing your current tab count. Tapping this square expands the menu, letting you switch between or close open tabs. Right next to that is the plus icon, which opens a brand new tab when tapped. The magnifying glass is your quick switcher. This is the fastest way to jump to any existing note in your vault or create a brand new one. Finally, on the far left, you have your navigation arrows to quickly jump back and forth between previous or next notes within your current tab. Markdown isn't always mobile-friendly to type. Luckily, the developers thought of this and provided you with a customizable Markdown toolbar. When you enter edit mode, this small row of buttons appears just above your keyboard. There are shortcuts here for common Markdown syntax like headings, bold, italics, links, bullet lists, tasks, code blocks, and much more. You can choose which shortcuts appear in this menu by going to settings. This is super useful if you only use a subset of these options, allowing you to tailor the mobile typing experience to your needs. The mobile version of Obsidian is not without its friction points. There are two major features that are more difficult than others to use on a small screen. First off, Canvas. While you can view a Canvas note perfectly fine, trying to edit or create one can be a tad frustrating. It's hard to resize cards, and it's constantly confusing your taps. It can be difficult to get it to know whether you want to enter edit mode or want to move the card. I recommend you limit your canvas use to read only on your phone, and save all major design work for the desktop. Images in the preview edit mode can be a little difficult to work with. Sometimes tapping an image will bring the image up for a closer view, and other times it will put you directly into edit mode near the image link. Just be aware that tapping behavior with images can be inconsistent. 
Apart from these two features, it's also kind of clunky to revise your notes since placing your cursor in the exact place you want it can be tricky sometimes, and can get kind of frustrating when you just want to fix that typo you made. This brings me to my recommendations for using Obsidian on mobile. Use Obsidian on your phone primarily when reading or reviewing your notes. This has been the most useful way for me to use it personally. It's nice when I'm in a meeting and something reminds me of a note I've taken and I can pull it up quick to have as a reference. For the fastest note-taking experience, use the Daily Notes plugin and set it to open today's note when you first open the app. This gives you a place to capture ideas fast, so you won't lose those precious insights. Now this video is most useful to you if you're already familiar with Obsidian on desktop. If you're still looking to learn the basics of Obsidian, you can check out my Ultimate Obsidian for Beginners guide next.